So as Vic told you, the whole point of open social is to make the web better by making it social, with the result being that that developer, the bottom of the picture, our goal is to make Noah smile. We want to allow one developer to build applications that reach more users in more contexts across more networks. So how do we do that? So what I'm going to tell you over the next not quite 10 minutes is walk you through the steps to build an open social application from scratch. I'm going to show you building it up from a very simple hello world application through four steps to a simple gift giving application. Before actually jumping into the code, let me go over a couple of the principles. The goal was one API that lets you build applications that reach and run on many different websites. To do that, to build rich applications, we wanted to have both server-side and client-side versions of the API accessed via both parts of an application. Tonight we're talking mostly about the client-side, the JavaScript piece. <clears throat> and the points on the client side that are, that as Vic mentioned, and you'll see as we go through the examples, is it's entirely based on standard web development. If you know how to work with HTML and JavaScript, our goal was to make you learn nothing new, just here's a handful of methods that get at the social information, and with that, you, anyone who knows how to build a web app now knows how to build a social web app. With the benefits being, as an application builder, I get more users for my app. The benefit for the users is I now have more apps that I can work, work with. So when we said we were going to do the simplest possible extension to the standard web development tools, what were those areas? We looked at what were the kinds of applications that you all were interested in building, that, are, that people were interested in using, and we said there's really only a handful of services that have to be exposed by an API. There's three sets of information about people that you need if you're going to build a social application. You need to know who I am, information about my profile, some basic, basic properties of who I am and about me. Who I know my friends, my connections, my relationships in the context of whatever social site I am, I'm running this application in. And then finally, information about what I do, what I'm doing, what things, updates, ways to do passive sharing of information between me and the other people I know. And then the last service is less about information and more about persistence of application information without requiring a server. One of our design goals in building Open Social was to say, as application developers, you should, certainly should be able to have an application that has heavy back-end server-based processing, but you shouldn't be required. You should be able to build very rich, interesting, interactive, powerful applications to work with users, let users work with each other, without needing a server. And to do that, we needed to include a persistence interface in the Open Social API. So those are the core services of Open Social. <clears throat> one piece of low-level code, then we're going to start building our app. At the bottom, the level of the stack that even most app developers don't have to look, like, look at, Open Social uses the standard AJAX-like asynchronous interface model that the web is built on. So at the bottom of the Open Social API are a set of interfaces that let you build requests, send them off, manage responses, and the requests, as you can see in the yellow highlights, map to the four services we talked about before. There are low-level requests to work with each of the four kinds of information that you need. Now, most app developers using any API, including Open Social, don't usually work at the bottom of the stack. They usually build wrappers around it and then use those wrappers to make it easy and fast to build applications that speak in terms of the semantics that they care about. So the hello world, step one of our four-step process here, all you need to do once you've made the low-level request to get the data is just access it. So here's a little code snippet that shows someone that all we're doing is we're calling get viewer and then get display name, and that would, in any container that implements open social, return the name of the current user. So if we could cut over to the, the demo, what you can see here, this is the actual source code that, that has some of the details I'm left out of the slides. The hello function is just this little bit at the top, and all it does is it sets the HTML of the page that I'm displaying to the current viewer's display name. And then if we take a look, and I'm running this sample, this sample demo inside Orkut, we can see, here it is, welcome David Glazer, and obviously this would be the name of whoever the current user was in whatever container you happen to be using that you were running, in which you were running your app. So now if we go back to the slides, what we can see is we're going to move on from a very simple Hello World app. We're going to insert a little bit of code in the middle, and we're going to call the Get Friends API. So one more JavaScript call. Let's go ahead and say, in addition to knowing who I am, let's, find, let's get a list of my friends. Again, friends in the context of the site in which I'm running. And then we'll use some standard JavaScript machinery to iterate through the list of friends, build a table, generate some HTML, insert that HTML in there. If we go back and take a look at the source code, we'll see the, the, the fuller version of that right down here. 
when we're actually generating the friends, we get the display name, and then you can see here, we're doing this get viewer friends as array, iterate through it, build up our table, set the inner HTML, and then if we want to see what that actually does. In the context of our ORCID sandbox, I don't have very many friends, but my friends here are iterated, and it iterated through, we see a list of them, and obviously basic information about them, like their profile photo, whatever, whatever other information we wanted to expose. All right, halfway, halfway there, that was two steps. Let's go on to the third step, back to the slides, please. And what we can see when we get back here is moving on from friends, we're now going to start actually doing something. We're going to add some interaction. This is a very simple app. It lets me give things to my friends. And to do that, we need to persist some information. So there's two parts to that. I need to read what gift I've already given one. This is the top yellow highlight, get the information. And then I need to, in the JavaScript, insert a little form element that, in this case, is a very simple interaction. It's just a dropdown. You put in the dropdown what gift you're giving. And then when the dropdown changes, we're going to do an update person app data request, the bottom yellow highlight. All right, let's cut back to code. <clears throat> and what we see here, down towards the bottom, we have the, the gifts function. A few details that we left out before around translating it into the proper data formats. But basically, all we're doing is pulling one more data field, inserting it into the, inserting a form field in there, and then we have our form handler up here that on the change event on the form will actually uh, do the push. So let's switch to third step of our demo. And what we'll see here is we now have inserted, and I could give Pal a hazelnut, and I can give Graham a peanut, and Lane, I think, is going to get a cashew tonight. So... Simple application, not much to it, but those on change events were hooked up to the, the update app data request. One more step if we go back to the slides. So step four here, we're going to add reaching out of the app and say, hey, not all the interactions that someone wants to do with my application are necessarily while they're looking at it. They might want to do some updating of their friends. They might some passive sharing of information that lets the information go from what's happening in the application beyond. So all you have to do to do that is in the same change handler that used to just update the user's data request, we make one more open social call down at the bottom of the screen where we say open social request create activity. That pushes an update out to whatever update management and notification system the containing website has, has built. And then that's delivered to all of the users, friends, audience, however the appropriate delivery mechanism is. We now have a way to reach out from our application into the larger world. Um, we can go back to the code. You're going to see very simple extension here, this handle change to function, which is the same on change. The first thing it does is it goes ahead and calls handle change one to do the first step, but then the one other thing it has to do is actually call this request create activity. And at the end of that, we're going to get an application that looks exactly the same. Um, this is the step four here, same exact functionality, but now when I'm doing that, I'm actually also posting some updates to an update stream, and we could go and walk through that. That's more a demo of the container. So that's it. Four steps through. Now, what I hope you took away from this is two things. First is, boy, that was easy. If you, or, or if it was hard, it was hard because it was HTML and JavaScript, but if you learn HTML and JavaScript, the open social part was easy. And second, that's not a very good app. You, you know, my design sensibilities here aren't very pretty. There's not much to that. Well, when you're building web apps, what do you usually do? You have one set of people who know how to make it work and another set of people who know how to make it work well and look good. And cer certainly what I do when I'm faced with that is I go to our design team. So if we could cut back to the slides, I went to our design team and said, what do you think of my app? And they said, well, you know, if we can go back to the slides, they said, well, you're, you know, it's okay, the functionality's all right, but, you know, if it were me, I would have made it look like that. And I said, great. I, I like that. I'd like you to make it look like that. You know what? Why don't you do it? Using all the HTML and JavaScript tools you already know, no open social knowledge needed. It's just a web application. Do what you always do. Make it pretty. Make it good. That's the beauty of open social. You don't have to learn anything new about HTML, about JavaScript, about CSS, about web design, about anything of that. What you do is you take all those tools you already know to build great applications, you hook up the social information, and now you can build great social web applications that run in any container that supports the open social API. So thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing many of those applications in many of those websites. Thank you, David.